Okay, this is the uh, LNA uh, committee um, on uh, March 18th at 8:50 p.m. Calling us to order. Um, can I, I think we have? Do we have everyone in attendance? Is that right? Chen just popped out to let Sharon in. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's everyone's here. Uh, all right, first item number four: uh, James Accomando. Uh, for the as an alternate to the historic district commission, could I have a motion? I'll move to approve. And a second, thank you. Pierre, are you okay? I'm good. Okay. Um, and oops, it just threw me off. There it is. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Jim Akamanda's appointment to the historic commission. Okay. Uh, next, we have for fair rent uh, Eileen Francis and Carl. Oops, because I'm not sure how to say his name, but we know who he is. Um, do we, I have a motion for that. So moved. Thank you, and a second, thank you. Any discussion on this item? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, next we have uh, alternates for fair rent, James Casey and Maureen Greenberg. I think neither of them were able to come tonight. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? They were. I think they're coming. They're coming next. Week. Yep. We, still vote on it, we could vote, or we could we could decide now. Okay. Okay, so we won't take that item up. Uh, next, we have Ethics Commission. Uh, Lisa Callahan. Do I have a motion? Aye. Carrie, and then Karen. Uh, any discussion on this item? She also seems great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, next we have HVAC Indoor Air Quality Building Committee, J Joseph Valley. Do I have a motion? So moved. Pierre, are you, you good? I'm good. Okay. Um, so uh, I have to second, no, was there? Uh, Carrie. Um, uh, any discussion on this item? It seems right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, moving on to Board of Finance, 130000 uh, That was for the truck, for um, Fire Department truck. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, I'm a, oh, sorry, Ken. Ken and then Karen. Uh, any discussion on this item? When um, I did the Fire Department tour yeah. at, a diff at the, um, I forget the, not the Jennings one, and that's where they have all the maintenance. Yeah. And, um, they talked about the truck on its last legs and how the new truck will be able to really go out to Buyers more easily and do things, and it just sounds uh, like it, it seems like a clear need. It's probably obvious to everyone, but they, they, you know, made it clear. And it's on the waterfall. It's in the plan. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Next, we have uh, 3.26 million non-recurring. Um, do I have a motion for that one? Karen and Jeff. Jeff and Karen, how about? Yeah. Um, uh, any discussion? Yeah, I'm just gonna, excuse me. I'm just going to abstain because I just want to see the cost justification on the golf stuff. Okay. Uh, Wait, it's the next one. one. I'm, I'm saying that one too. Can That's we the, break? Can this we, is the bridge. This one. is the bridge one. This that is still, this isn't. Oh wait. These are, these are the seven items. Yeah. They're all can we move to, I think Marcy said we could move to vote on all the others. Approve all the others. They're separate. Not that. I don't know if that's. Yeah, we'll, we'll segregate them and vote on them individually. Are there two? There's a 3.26. Yeah, we can't do it. 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 Yeah, we can not do it yeah 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 <laughs> okay, Pierre, can you um, make that magic happen in the in the minutes, sir? Does that, does that make it no, so does that, does that make any new motion? Does that, none of it makes any difference. It's all just. Uh, yeah, it's going to carry anything. Yeah, it's going to be carried. So it's going to be all yeah, all items together next week. But, but, you know, Marcy told us that if we segregate out, if all the committees segregate out the driving range, then Bill won't have to come back if we all vote unanimously on items oh. one through six. That's what we were instructed before we so left. Bill, oh, I see Bill yeah. So uh, if I make a motion to consider items one through six as one group okay. and item seven separately. I'll second that. You good, Pierre? Um, yep. 
treatment? Does does go even need to come back in? We were we were told that if we don't separate it out mm -hmm. and someone abstains, then the whole thing has to be considered. Marcy said that we would end up having to invite Bill back. So, Mike, on the consent calendar, the parts of it would go on the consent calendar? Yeah. Sure. I, don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't I, hurt, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the, the only way I look at it is it puts a lot, like, I, I'm in support of driving range because so I think it's a revenue generator, and I'm, this is part of my discussion on this item. I think it's important because we have, a, we have a, not a, I mean, we have one of the best municipal courses in the state, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a prize of fair field. And the driving range is really falling apart. And it's like you have this great course for this really dilapidated driving range. And to bring that to that same level, I think is pretty important, let alone the revenue. And by separating it out, I just think it, I think we can still discuss everything at once, but I don't know if that that hurts the chances of that being approved. I think it's a it's important But that's one of the things people are gonna talk about though. I mean so and whether but I'm just saying, like, but I think that this is a little bit of semantics because I don't think anyone's going to talk about anything anyway. Anyways, the I have issues with the golf course. I know I'm going to raise things on the golf course. Sounds like Ken is, but I'm not going to talk about the bridges. I'm like, that's all. So it's, I, I think visually it might call it out, but I don't think from a practical perspective it's any different because that's all we're going to talk about. So I, yeah, it sounds like we're all okay with everything else, but not that's what said, right. As opposed to abstaining on the whole thing. We mm -hmm. just stay on the one item. Just it has to be done with every committee, though. Yeah, we can't dictate. Yeah. Right. So that, that other committee doesn't yeah. do it. Okay. Yes, we just go back to square one. Like if it's not on the consent calendar, we have to consider it at the meeting anyway, right? Well, well, all five committees. I'm just saying all five committees tonight need to do what we're doing. I know. Okay. We received instructions, so you know if uh, they paid. Yeah. I'm not. We were given advice, not instruction, but we asked the question. We were told that we could separate it out. So to your point, yes, maybe not all of them will see I mean, the yeah. advice that we were given. But you know, right? No, I just say let's do it. I don't think there's a, a harm in us doing this. Right. Otherwise, we're back to where we are now. Yeah. Right. yeah I agree. So we have a motion on the table. Do we have a second to that motion? I think yeah. Karen did. Karen second. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion on this motion to separate them? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, <clears throat> any opposed? One no. Any abstentions? Okay. All right. So they're separated. So let's talk about the first, what was it, six, right? The first six. Any discussion on the first six? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. And then on number seven, any discussion on that? I think people raised some good concerns yeah. about it. Yeah. Environmental costs. I, I, we'll get more answers from Anthony, but um, I'm inclined. I don't know. I'm inclined to not be in favor of it, but I, I want to hear more from Anthony. Yeah, I'll just, excuse me, I'll just say that I'm, I'm inclined to favor this. I just, I just look at an expense like this. Is, you know, this is a nice to have kind of expense, obviously, but it's also a revenue generator. So I just want to make sure we're going to spend on nice to have that it's going to bring in revenue basically to cover itself, mm -hmm. which I think that it will, but I just want to see it first. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I agree. I think it's hard to talk about revenue without looking at what the expenses are and, yeah. and yeah. looking at the net. Um, so. I'm really concerned about the propane tanks. Mm -hmm. I would really prefer them to find a non-fossil fuel. I know it's not goofy, but... Or Sunday, but I mean, what was nice is Anthony said that he'd be willing to look into an alternative, and I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say about that because that's my sticking point. Other than that, I, I mean, the only other thing I'm going to say, yes, we should look certainly we can look at that. Um, it's 235,000, so it brings in 150,000 in revenue. So in year two, if we're flat, it's going to pay for it. And this is, I would think, going to be a measure. Well, we've been making an assumption, though, to, to Ken's point. He hasn't given us all the information. There's I mean, an assumption that it's bringing in 150,000 a year right now right. in the state it's in. Right. And what, Gross, what, not what, that. Right, right. We don't have the expenses. We don't have the expenses. Um, we'll see. And he should have known that that was going to be a question. Which is a few years. It's a long-term investment. This is my big thing. The revenue yeah. 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 Well, we, I, I, that, I think that's true, but yeah. until you see the net, you don't know if it's a revenue generator. Yeah. Any other discussion on this item? Okay. All those in favor of approving seven. Okay. We have Jeff. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The balance of the room. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, that brings us to the next resolution, which is uh, the 3.7. So does somebody have the backup open? What is, can, uh, can anyone 
give a quick rundown of what is in the 3.7. What do you mean, um, elderly and this is, Sorry, this is the, uh, this is an amendment. So this is a amending the, uh, it's just a change, change. a small change. It looked like a big thing, but it's really just a small change, right? The 83 or 84,000 change, right? Thank oh, you. Oh, yeah. Um, do I have a motion on this? Karen, do I have a second? No, Ken. Any discussion? So this is 103.85 was the cost. But they said 85 was the cost. Yeah, it was hard to track. And 54 was going to go from past the, the savings towards this. But is the cost 85 or is the cost 103? I think 103 was the initial cost, and then they saved 54 from uh -huh. the 103, and that's being applied to the new project, which is the new decking. So 30,000 to do the new expenditure. It's just kind of reallocating yes. it to a different yeah. Yeah. Okay. project. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That's unanimous. Um, okay, that brings us to we have tax relief and then we're going to have ethics. I think tax relief is, the, I think, the lighter lift for the room here. So let's definitely start with that one. Um, Sharon, are you leading that conversation? Are you? Presenting that? Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so these changes have been um, approved um, by the Board of Finance and they've been approved by the um, Senior and Disabled Tax Relief Subcommittee of the RTM. And um, the only changes are what's in red line and what's in highlight on page 69 of the packet. Yeah. Okay. And can you just, where did they start from? Were these re requested by somebody or, or was this a committee or where did they come from? Um, from Ross. Gotcha. Thank yeah. you. And in some cases it's, it's to be compliant with um, the state regs is my understanding. And then some of it is just to some, it, it, it's Clean basically up. all housekeeping yeah. items. Yeah. yeah. Can you remind us who Ross is? Um, the tax assessor. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Murray. Ross Murray. Thank you. So, um, okay. So the change in 9515B, um, so Ross explained this, um, that it's really putting a stake in the ground, um, that we're using the 10-year um, treasury note rate as of the opening price because the way it was written, it could be up to interpretation and if it was going to be like, you know, the closing price or the opening price, so you just put a stake in the ground for clarification purposes. And then on change number two, um, there, the reason why this change came about was to, um, this is in cases where people are, um, you know, have to prove what their assets are and they wanted to change it to a calendar year so that it's con uh, consistent with like your tax reporting so that it's not, you know, as of the date that you're applying, it's as of the previous calendar year so that if you have tax returns, it's easier to provide the information. And then um, with the red line change, that's change number three in 95.9, um, they were required to send a copy um, to the taxpayer to like to indicate that they were a recipient of senior, you know, of senior tax relief, but it, it it's printed on the statement that they receive um, tax relief. So it's wasting resources to make them go ahead and have to mail stuff out twice. Is the timing different though? Would they have gotten the notification ahead of time before their bill came? Um, you know, they. I think when they come in to speak with with him, they know that they're that they're going to receive it, and then it's it shows up in their tax bill anyway. I see. So they, yeah. it's not it's not a change in when they find out; it's just a change in when they get the written document. Okay. Yeah, it, he said it's just adding an extra step yep. that isn't adding any value to the Got process it. and costing a lot of stamps and Got it. pain and suffering. Sure. Can I scratch you up yep. to, to ninety five eight? So so basically, the the whole purpose of that change. It's just to make it administratively easier for them to determine the asset value, right? Correct. That's it. But that's just because 
based on the tax return, that's income. It doesn't have asset value. Yeah, well, it, um, yeah, that's true. I think I understand what you're saying, but it's just to make it all consistent. That was my understanding. Do they have to reapply every year? Um, I think so. I don't. I, I'm I'm very new to the process, so we've only had one meeting. Okay. I can tell you more very soon. I'd be interested to know. I'm assuming they have to I reapply so. every yeah. year. Yeah. But it would so. be yeah. I think so. If that's not the case, what if yeah. it is no, I don't bother. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, 95.8. 8. Yeah, so we did. The only other change was um, the, the age. Yeah, change number four. So um, they're changing the age of the spouse from 60 to 50. So what happens is if um, if someone qualifies and then they die, then the surviving spouse, um, they lower the threshold. And he said that at, um, right now this would not affect anybody that's applied. Um, then why are they changing it? I think that the, the change was to be consistent with state policy. So, um, yeah, but we asked him how many people this would affect because we want, would want to know, like, is this going to create yeah. more tax abatement than mm -hmm. we want? But he said right now it doesn't affect anybody. That would be good to know, though, if, it, if, if it's consistent with state policy, it's one thing. Or does yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody have, like, yeah, a 49-year-old right. girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. and we all know, I know. Are we going to get, um, you know, 50 years of age, mm -hmm. you still got plenty of time to yeah. work, you know what I mean? So, but you have to re so the way that he explained it to us is that you have to reapply. They would still have to reapply the next year. So but they would remain eligible, right, if they were the spouse? They may or may not, right? I mean, the Based on age, won't, age won't preclude that. Mm -hmm. yeah. it won't. But it would be oh, I see. So, so basically... And forgive me because I'm, I don't, I'm not an expert on saying No, and I'm still very good yeah. so, so I apologize. So, I'm so what would happen is if you had somebody who's 65, has um, a spouse who's 50, this 65-year-old dies in, in the year that they're applying or in the, in the year that they've been approved. Mm -hmm. The approval stays in effect for the rest of the year, but then the 50-year-old would have to. Well, I'm guessing you probably even couldn't apply, but then that's it, right? It, it ends there. Yes, they'd that's have to reapply. Perpetual. Okay. So yeah. just for that year, they're at that. Yeah, I mean, that's a decent question. But if they still have less than six hundred fifty thousand dollars in assets, they'd be eligible for the tax relief for. Indefinitely. Yeah. Once they're 65. Right, so they're in there already. I think from 50 on. That's, that's, that's not that's 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 This is an anomaly of the situation. Yeah. I mean, this is a spouse. When is this ever going to happen? This is only the spouse. Yeah. yeah. And the only thing I'm trying to find, and I apologize, I'm trying to find my notes on what this was consistent with because he did explain why. I, I heard they want to do 30 at first, but that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's such an anomaly in Fairfield to have this. Yeah, really. Yeah, the town program has this age requirement of 60. Well, the state program has the age requirement of 60. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, I was right. I was right. I just couldn't didn't read. Okay, thank you. So what was the question? In the notes, it just says that currently the town says 60 while the state says 50. Oh, so it's to meet the state requirement. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Or, or maybe not requirement, but just be consistent with it. It should be consistent with okay. it. Yeah. So that's all. Um, that's all I have. And then there was one other change that went before the Board of Finance that they um, voted against, and it was this suggested change five. Yeah, change number five did not pass BOS. I hope that explains why it wasn't redlined. We don't have it though in our packet, right? We don't see it. 
It's, it's in the packet, but the oh, packet but the, uh, the highlight it changes what there's nothing highlight. I can keep the highlighting because yeah. they didn't approve it. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you don't have to worry about it it's not before us. It was yeah. to change the um sure yeah. Amend the definition of qualifying income from a gross did, adjusted gross income as defined in the IRS to all taxable and non taxable income. Yeah, they don't want to do that. So it's still adjusted gross income. Okay. Uh, any other discussion on these proposed uh, edits, changes? Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, change two is potentially problematic. If you have, if you suffer some sort of medical emergency early in a year and you incur $200,000 in medical expenses throughout that year. And then so you apply for this tax relief. I know it's a hypothetical, but this isn't so outside the realm of possibility. You apply for that tax relief in November and you no longer qualify. And you would qualify because you had less than $650,000 in assets, but you wouldn't qualify if it's revised. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if that one. If you have say seven hundred thousand dollars in in assets, right? You suffer some sort of medical emergency or or medical condition that requires two hundred thousand dollars in medical expenditures during the course of the year. During the course of the year, mm -hmm. you apply then in November for the tax relief for that current year or for the next year. For 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 that for that current year, okay. you're not going to get the tax relief because as of January one, I for some you had six hundred fifty thousand dollars. I got gotcha. mm. you. Um, I mean, well, why isn't it either or? Well, my, my only counter to that would be from an administrative standpoint, most everybody is going to be issuing some sort of statements for whatever asset holdings that you might have at the end of the year, trying to establish asset valuations at any other point may be problematic. And my guess is the town just doesn't want to find itself. Being in the position of becoming, you know, appraisers on, on asset values. So I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's just an administrative thing. I, just, I mean, valid point, but is it possible to have some kind of um, appeal process, like for extenuating circumstances? In other words, this could be standard practice, but if you suffered some sort of catastrophe, I mean, I hear you because I've had some dramatic changes in my yeah. taxes from one year, six months into the next year, um, which is why somebody would be prompted to look for relief, most likely. Was this required by the state? Like, does this match the state um, requirement? This one, I think that this one was really, um, it was administrative because the statements that you received would be calendar year. Yeah. And any kind of proof that you would have with your tax returns are also counted here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your statements are issued monthly. I mean, you right. can work on yeah. all of your brokerage and, and and bank account statements are going to be issued monthly. Not necessarily anymore. Like a lot, a lot of firms are quarterly. Mm -hmm. Getting away from that because they don't want to spend time like any paper and all that kind of stuff. They could probably get you a statement. Yeah. If again, they probably could, but I think I think what the town is trying to do, similar to the first change, is they're just trying to put a marker and saying like this is this is the process that we are going to follow rather than opening it up to all kinds of different scenarios. And I'm not sure Ross would would want to take on the um decision making of like whether that oh, paper oh, yeah. yeah that that illness okay. whatever. I, I'm not sure he even could, but I think he would say I don't want to have to be the one to say, yeah, that that surgery cost should be deducted, and that but that one should that cost should. I, what about like other contexts, like when you're applying for you know student loans, like when you're being recalculated or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, or even like with the COVID you know stimulus payments, like you could submit a recent pay stub, or you could submit your prior tax returns and say that you know your financial situation hasn't really changed since then. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why it's not like an either or situation. Yeah, I think building on Pierre's point, what about a provision that if there's been a material change in your financial circumstances since January or December 31 of the prior year, um, the, what is it, the committee or, yeah, the committee would have the right to um, value your your total assets as the date of your application. Mm -hmm. So what Pierre's talking about, though, is you're talking about lenders who have access to all kinds of financial information on everybody, unfortunately, right? So, so they're making 
you know, a risk analysis based on, on the individual, what the individual is presented and what they're getting through, like, you know, DMV and all these other kind of credit agencies, or I don't know that the town has the ability to, to do that. So well, that's well but, but they surely would, because if, you, if you're alleging that, you, there, that you've had a material change, you're going to have to evidence that, and that's easy to do. You can look at your December 31 statement balances and then look at your balances as the date of your application and take three seconds to pull that together and submit it to the committee. But we don't have the ability to, I believe, to revise this. Um, so I, I, this sounds like questions for Ross to me. Mm, yeah. Is he? Do we know if he's going to be at the meeting on Monday? I would imagine I can he ask. would be. Yeah, it, it sounds like this is something we should either ask in advance of Monday or on Monday and, and get his, his input on it. Yeah, it's, it's this waiver issue that's the biggest one. And yeah. uh, who, who's going to make the decision? How's it going to be made? What are the circumstances? What's the threshold that needs to be met? These are like pretty important, needy issues. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's all and it's right now. It's all just determined by affidavit. Would would it yeah. be appropriate for him to come to the meeting though, when when this is still an L and A? Like, shouldn't he come to an L and A meeting? Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah right. that's right. So we have the choice of either holding this in L and A and bringing them in here to talk to us, mm -hmm. or pushing it out to the main meeting. But it wouldn't be on Monday; it would be in, in another. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Is there? Do we know, Sharon, if there's any time yeah, constraint time. on this? I mean, I I know that they were trying to push it through, um, so it's well, why don't we just do it as, like let's go ahead and vote on it and what we want now and then just contact him and see, you know, if he's able to come next month to see us. If he yeah. says no, we gotta get this done. Then he can come and vote. Well, but can we, we vote can it out. A special committee meeting next week. We could. Yeah, I'll just have him come next week. I'm almost wondering if we're going to need another meeting to talk about ethics as well. Okay. That's something to think about. We'll, we'll know when we start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About. All right. So, given all that, we, are people ready to take a vote on on this item? Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm going to. We're all talking about it. Right. I right. Want to, yeah. yeah. I want to understand. Yeah. I'm saying, saying you want to formalize that. Yeah. 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 Formalize it. Okay. All in favor? Any uh, against? Any abstentions? Okay. So we're all abstaining on this, and we're going to. Uh, invite Ross to come to a special meeting of LNA to talk about this opposition. Okay. Cool. okay. Ooh. Um, all right. You might have like if you can set it up via like Zoom or something like that. Yeah. 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 That would be yeah. yeah. Would you? And it's just reminded to yeah, to call Ross yeah. to the special meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we are on to uh, the ethics, uh, um, sorry, ordinance, I guess it is. Wait, are we voting on the other items individually? Or are we voting on collectively? Are we not voting on them at all? On the we just the, 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 Yeah. That was one of the changes. That well, was I was taking the whole thing. Oh, that was the whole thing. Okay, all right. Gotcha. Yeah. That way we can ask more questions. Yeah, I don't think we could. Just in this case, I don't care yeah, for it out. Okay. Yeah. You think Ross yeah. Like a pre meeting before the actual. You could do that, or maybe if he just shows us in front of the body. But then you know, he's got a contact. A little bit. We're not this. I would think we're voting on this this month. This is just the LA. Yeah, exactly. This is. So we just kept it. We just kept it in LA. Yeah. I think what we, by abstaining, we just kind of kept it in LNA, mm -hmm. not leaving LNA, and we're going to um, see if we can get Ross in here with us uh, mm -hmm. or somewhere with us or online with us. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. So we are moving on to ethics. Um, and who is who is presenting that? I, I guess I am. Okay. <laughs> I'll jump in. I missed that last one. Several years. Um, so... Um, I think a lot of people, um, I think even on both sides of the aisle, I'm not sure I'm talking about this too, to get realize that we don't really have a very robust ethics um, um, guide from the town. There's in the, um, the charter, there's information about how to, um, how the ethics commission will operate, kind of limited information, but it's there. There's also standards of conduct that mainly talk about um, conflict of interest, it's really pretty much what it's about. And um, and then in the code, there's um, also just really just about how the 
um, commissions and, and boards have to be informed every year about the ethics and stuff like that. But in the charter, it gives um, the RTM the ability to create a code of ethics. So um, I, I would say this probably started with the fill pile and that everybody was talking about we needed more of the, a more robust code of ethics. And then it just, it, it would make, it would catch us up to what other towns are doing. We used, in, in creating this, we looked at a lot of other towns in Connecticut. Um, there was also from the council, uh, what's the CC? Uh, council of Government. Municipal. Yeah. Yeah, Connecticut, Connecticut, Connecticut Council Municipality. Right. Thank you. They had a full, they had a lot of information about ethics um, ordinances generally, and they had a model, and um, so we, we had a lot of input from various sources. So we created this code of conduct, um, our code of ethics, that we are hoping will be passed. So um, we can look at. I, I don't know. Is there more I should say? So let me. I would just add. Yeah. To, to what Karen said, so corporate America went to codes of ethics after Enron in 2002. Never let a good crisis go to waste. Um, Milford, Greenwich, Stratford, the state of Connecticut. I don't know why Fairfield doesn't have one, but in particular, given the fill pile situation, we're going back to my never let a crisis, good crisis go to waste. Mm -hmm. um, the intent of this is to outline and effectively legislate common sense. So there's, if everybody were upstanding and not a criminal, we wouldn't need this. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, not everybody's upstanding and not a criminal. So. Accordingly, we uh, we tried to take we tried to, to piece together what we thought was sort of um, best practices throughout. Uh, there's no pride in authorship because it did come from various models in different towns, and there was a lot of discussion that was had. But it doesn't mean it has to be the end of discussion. Right. Before you make one to this, so where where is it lacking in the charter? I mean, I don't I don't know. Well, really, all the charter addresses is conflict of interest, which is important. This mm -hmm. goes in a little more into con the details about conflict of interest. Um, and this also, let's see, uh, it goes into a lot more detail about conflict of interest. Employment, yes, um, financial and personal interest. I mean, we, I, I think we tried to think of like even an obligation for when you need to make, make things clear and transparent. Yeah. So there's and not only the things you can't do, there are exceptions to Gifts, right? You say you can't have any gifts, and the reception here, was, I think we use $100 or something. There. Mm -hmm. So there's the first few pages. I think that we went out of our way compared to others so that to identify things that don't qualify mm -hmm. as violations of codes of ethics in an attempt to make it a little bit more transparent. Some could say it becomes more confusing, but in an effort to try to say, like, yeah, you can do things. You can have people for dinner and you know, whatever. Can you? But, so because I, I want to I want to ask you to follow up on that point, but so my so my question is the the language that's here sounds like you guys consolidated from a number of different sources. Mm -hmm. um, and the town attorney. So was there was there anything basically is it like cut and paste or did you make significant modifications to language from other sources? And if you did. Where are those? And then to the point that you just made, when you say like things you're trying to like that are acceptable, like what can you give me some some examples of that kind so of? So in the beginning, Ken, so I I didn't Karen did the first draft, so like in the definitions here in terms mm -hmm. of um, uh, definition, hold on, it's really not the definitions, it's really how it's used in the definitions. You got twenty one three, the investigation, enforcement, impartiality, blah blah blah. blah. There are carve outs. What it doesn't constitute a gift. Yeah, definition of gift. And what doesn't constitute a gift that would be prohibited? That's the kind of thing. So, like, if you look at Greenwich, yeah. Greenwich is a one pager. It basically says, you can't do all these things. And if you do this, you need to tell people. Here, you can't do all these things, except, like, for example, mm -hmm. there are these various carve outs. Well, I should have read this more recently like than I did. But you can get a wedding gift, or you can have someone over for dinner. Or you can see that up to $100 on a bottle of wine. That doesn't count, constitute a violation. So okay. what we're recognizing is that sometimes humans can be humans, it's really right. friends, and not try to, like, try to gin up political favors. Yeah. It's much more black and white in some of the other towns. Um, so you want to put some limits and restrictions in place but not make it, you know, to the extremes. Right. And create some areas that right. make and sense for human life. 
Correct. And as, as um, um, Harry said, it's really, it, it really is, to us, it seems like common sense. It's probably how we all behave anyway, but that we need to put it in writing. Did you did you guys, like, make the language stricter anywhere than, than yeah. where you saw well, in other places? No, I don't know we did that. No. I know. Um, I'm a corporate lawyer. I never create a new wheel. I just take other people's wheels and make sure that it keeps working. And it's hard to tell you, like, I, we took well, that's, see, so that's many what I'm trying to yeah, so, so, like, I like I look at this, the best and, it's also, it's a, and I'm not a lawyer, so I read this movie because this is a lot of legal ease for me. And so on the mm -hmm. surface, I'm like, these things seem fine, right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to understand, what I, I'm just trying to understand, I'm relying on you guys as the experts. Are there are there things in, in this document that would be, Significantly different from what you've seen elsewhere, either where we made it more strict or where we loosened it up. Now, you give an example where we, where we loosened it up, and that seems to make sense to me. But that's those are things yeah. I'm trying to understand. I think we not. made it looser. I think that's a counter argument, but I was going to state myself yeah. is that it's a little bit more confusing because there are exceptions. Yeah. At the same time, the way I approach it, which might be different than Karen, is that. If you look at just the way we've been tried writing the front, which I think I took from Milford's, and like, what's the purpose of this? So the purpose of this is to try to instill public confidence in our government, yeah. reinstill and maintain, and um, to give people guidelines so that candidly, if like there's a question in your own mind, can I do this? Here's, you know, here's the rules of monopoly. You can or you cannot, and you should right. be able to find it, even if the rules of monopoly for sunny play are hard to do. Um, I don't think that anyone's like, you know, no one's playing gotcha with this document. Mm -hmm. it's, and and that's sort of like a debate I think anyone's going to have. Like, oh, you can't do that. But I personally, I'm just, I, I tend to think about these sometimes more on a practical level. You should know it. If you don't know it, this is a reference guide for you right. to figure out, like, do you have to tell the commission? I don't know. Like, for example, a first selection or any selection, their cousins on contractor, you know, as a contractor before we start to, before the town takes a bid from a contractor. Oh, yeah, you should probably right. tell people, right. like, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So and candidly, we, we are subject, we personally are subject. Right. So if it was mm -hmm. ridiculous, we wouldn't want to. No, of course. Want to know. I mean, I, I, I read in, yes, the first impression is, wow, this is, this is like, you know, it's not confusing. It's, it's convoluted, um, you know, certainly for your, if your average Sean volunteer here, it's not something that they're something they're signing up for. It's like, yeah, okay, I was asked to serve on the on the you know the building committee, but I got to abide by the rules. Now that being said, we've had some major problems here in this town, and for us to come back and address the very issue of ethics that were violated in multiple egregious ways in the last five, six, seven, eight years. I think it's great we're addressing. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just so it's not onerous and confusing, obviously, that, that's important. So I guess the question is, um, you said you got it from a, a few other towns, using Greenwich and others, or do, would you say out of the 169 towns, do we even know, like, do 150 towns out of the ethics ordinance, do six towns? I'm just curious. So, I don't know about all of them. Yeah. That's what I've done. So, State of Connecticut does, mm -hmm. and the ones that I look at were Milford, Greenwich, Westport, and Stratford. And then Milford, Greenwich, Westport, and Westport. Yeah. And West, I think Westport. So yeah, I'm Westport. Yeah. Those ones. Those ones. Yeah, I was trying to think about like towns that. Right. Uh, yeah, I totally understand the state level. I mean, they're 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 paid for their positions. I mean, you don't pay positions in town here. Mister Jeff, I think that the way that I would think about this, like the the date, you know, in favor. I look. I get that. Like we're all volunteers. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, every billable hour that's just sending us. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> right. um, Don't but, um, the hardest part from an administrative is that perspective. Is that on an annual basis, I, it's probably Betsy's gonna have to like be sending this out and get some kind of um, response back that people have received it, and then it's there. Like, that's the policing force here. I don't think there's really policing force other than if somebody sort of caught because and they didn't, you know, they were otherwise obligated mm -hmm. to disclose, yeah, we have fines in here. But, again, sort of the point is, like, you know that you get it as town official, volunteer, de minimisly paid. You sign off, you say you've got it, and then it's in your file. So if 
you yourself know, like, just, it, it's kind of like, you probably should know when you're doing something, yeah. there's like, it, it, you know, an issue pops in your head. Yeah. And it's a reference guide. Is there a difference between the way um, non-employee volunteers are treated as opposed to, you know, paid town employees? In, I, I would say in most respects, no, because we can use our office to, to take advantage and make money. So it's the same issue whether we're paid or not. That we that what we're getting at is using our office in a way that benefits us or our family. So. I think that's kind of the heart of it. So anybody, you know. This may be somewhere else, but I'm looking at Section 21 of 3. And so the Ethics Commission can investigate and enforce violations of this ordinance. Mm -hmm. Is the Ethics Commission also going to, or are they going to conduct the hearing on the violation? They do, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to say as a caveat that I mean, there is a question. Yeah, okay. the charter has gives, gives them very little power, and that was discussed in the charter um, commission last year. That I think that that committee, that group even wanted to give them some more power and to they can investigate, they do investigate, but I mean to to actually have some impact on you know and and some consequences. Yeah, well, it seems like a consequence they could be removed or dismissed from office. That's what yes, yeah, that's by by the commission. No, well, at the moment. I don't think the, I'm not sure the commission can. What, the, what it says right now is the commission can recommend to the board of selectmen or the department um, for what they think should happen, and then they decide. I think that if if we redo the charter, um, it would be great to, to beef up what the ethics commission. Can so do. the commission will be the fact finding body, mm -hmm. and then they'll make their recommendations to the board of selectmen. For based on the current charter, yes. I'm hoping it will change because the other towns have to give the commission a little more power than that. Um, so this applies to elected as well as volunteer as well as eight town employees? Um, yes. So this applies to everyone. Right. And then if there's a violation, the commission uncovers it, recommends, and then board select them can remove anyone, whether they're volunteer or paid or the, on the employees that the employee, the boss is still over there. Right. right. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's the government's not going to be the, the boss of the paid officials, but they make recommendations or somewhere in the charter. In the charter. But this is, uh, this it covers, say, volunteers. It says public official and public. Employees. Yeah. There's the officials that's like the public officials, mm -hmm. whether it's elected or appointed, mm -hmm. versus public employees. Mm -hmm. So the policy covers both, but there are times where the public employees policy covers both in almost every circumstance, but I don't think the ethics commission has the right to fire a public employee. Right. Yeah. The that's, that's my question. Yeah. 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 No, we did not make, we did not substitute the government to become the boss of the paid employees. Mm -hmm. right. Is there a state statute that would apply? They in what sense? I mean, they have, they have, um, they have one, right? that's but it's for the state of Connecticut. It doesn't apply to that. Okay. Yeah. That was my question. There's nothing that gets, um, yeah, that, that would take precedence. Yeah, mm -hmm. like exactly. State, and then any local would take precedence and we would defer to the state if that doesn't exist or one is strict. You remember the noise? Mm -hmm. I mean, right, right. As long as the, the challenge is not less strict. Yeah, there's no requirement under state law that we have this. In 21.3, where it says uh, the commission shall have the power to investigate any claim of an ethics violation pursuant to terms of the charter and this ordinance, mm -hmm. and to take any action permitted by the charter by the charter or the ordinance to be taken by it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that should say and? I, I, I think so, but but, but, beside, but setting that aside, yeah. um, what 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 actions can the, the Commission take what do you want to because if they can only refer to the board of selectmen, mm -hmm. it sounds like they can't do anything. Right. So we've written this assuming if the current charter applies, and all they can do is take the action of saying we think this person should be removed, or we think they should pay this fine, and the board of selectmen or the supervisor of the employee have to have to decide. So, so does it say and this ordinance? Does it make reference to the powers under this ordinance, even though there are, don't seem to be any new powers under this ordinance? 
in case the ordinance gets revised at some point to give the commission more powers? Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the yeah, that's the thinking. Gotcha. Hopefully we can get it more powers. Mm -hmm. Other towns, I can't say every other town, but other towns, the Ethics Commission had more clout in terms of what they can mm -hmm. use. Um, and we have, what can we do in other towns? Um, they could make decisions about what the penalty would be within reason. I'm sure they're bound by union contracts yeah. and things like that. But they can make issue a fine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, and that and that appeals to me personally a little because they the ethics commission hopefully is apolitical, so you're not you know they're making decisions based just on the code of ethics and those rules, and we're not getting into like any other body that might have political leanings or something. So so the charter has the mechanism for removing somebody from office, right? So I'm talking about like elected officials that. Yeah, that, I, I wasn't sure about that because would that then just go to so like yeah? So what's what's the mechanism? Yeah, for what? Mm -hmm. Let's say volunteer yeah. or someone yeah. on the board commission or who was elected for right. a non-state. It may be true under state law that an elected official can be removed from office. That's what the county attorney thinks may be the case. But um, an appointed official, like boards and commission, mm -hmm. could be. That's, yeah. I don't think an elected official means we can use that. Federal government, I think, you know, yeah. if the people elect somebody, that's, that's they elect somebody. I mean, yeah. like but at a point, it's like somebody on the fairness. Until, you know, right. indicted. Because right. I think that's what you were asking, right? Right. Like, what's the, what's the, right. Where's the teeth? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. But I agree. I think we want to see more teeth. And at the moment, so that's the policy thing that people, yeah. like, you can yeah. reprimand them. So it's like you reprimand them, find them. And then, it's letting the people know so that right. they have the information to make right. a decision later. But if the man on the store commission is, I don't know, so, so running a business to like fix up historic houses and we don't want to see that happen, then, you know, right. a conflict. So, so basically, for, for an elected official, I'm not talking about the paid employees because obviously they're, they're terms of order, the contracts, you can cover all that right. stuff. So right. for like an elected official or an appointed official, mm -hmm. really the 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 penalty is $250 violation. Now, if there was some criminal aspect to it, obviously, it would be right. a different story. But otherwise, you're looking at like a $250 violation. For an election. Should yeah. there be like a discouragement yeah. provision, too, where any ill gotten gains have to get back? Well, that's, cr that's going to be criminal. Then. That's right. That yeah. And even on a $250, i will just tell you, like, I don't, we're never going to have the enforcement of it. It's more the threat than yeah, the embarrassment. Yeah. 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 It's the black part. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So, yeah, because you can't get removed as an elected official, but you can get removed if you're appointed. You just, you know, we recommend you, you know, uh, right. remove them from the commission or whatever. Um, so that's possible. But actually, that might be, maybe that's not so make the distinction appointed officials can be removed. Mm -hmm. Can be, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah we say, be. I think we say anyone can be removed. But elected officials probably can't be anyway when it comes to So where does it say anyone can be removed? In this mm -hmm. list on page 75, is this any penalty containing any other provision of law or as provided for in the charter, any person who violates any provision of this code may be reprimanded, suspended, removed, or dismissed from office or position. So maybe that's just the question. Yeah, but maybe they're lying. Yeah, that's the Maybe they're lying. There needs to be lying from mechanism for the removal. So they remove them. Yeah, removes them. And I guess the maybe, it even doesn't say, yeah, who. So it's, it's as um, here, it's kind of deliberately being because right now, the ethics commission could it could just re recommend to the appropriate mm -hmm. what the town charter says board of selection or the you know management we recommend you remove them or we recommend that you find you know find so you recommend the, the appointing agency you recommend right sort of. or the the town manager because if they're paid then they're going to be dealt with the normal process mm -hmm. being fired or whatever else um, and then elected you're appealing to the voter. Right. Hey, voters, right. this is what this person did. Well, both of them again. Yeah, it's not a bad way to like, specify a little bit like what that mechanism yeah. is. Mm -hmm. Just, to, just to give it a little more. Yeah, no, maybe a hearing would be to talk to Clyde's commission and and those days. It's in the charter. I think it's in the charter. I mean, we could echo it here, but um, it is in the charter. Um, just the removal thing sounds so daunting. Like, okay, we're moving. Like, how? Yeah. Then, who does it? That, that element. Yeah. Remember, we have decisions 
all vote on things, right? So, okay. you know, that's good. I don't really know any financial ways we can all benefit by I mean, we're, their votes. We're not, we're not making money. We're not, we're not a paid. We're not paid for yeah, anything. You, you, could, you could, you could, you could like, but they could come yeah. up. Yeah, they could be, but we also refuse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. But then we refuse to sell. Well, that's okay. We always self-govern. But this says that again, it reinforces you should recuse yourself. But I'm not sure. Should definitely be recusing, and others should be, you know, mentioning to people that they should be recused. You know, and that's okay. Right. Right. I'm trying to find this charter provision. Um, yeah, but like you yeah, said, I think kind of negatively defining, you know, what, like, like defining what is allowed is useful because you might think, hmm, is this a conflict? I can look at this. Right, yeah. uh, maybe I do need to refuse if I don't. And if somebody accuses you for having done it, know it's actually allowed. Yeah, it can, it can be a bar to frivolous complaints. There's something coming up where Sacred Heart has invited, I think, 12 RTM reps to, um, to come to Sacred Heart for the dinner event. Hmm. And basically saying, hey, you know, these are our new reps, you know, community, these are the new reps, you know, we support all your work, let us know how we can help you. Kind of like, hey, reps, we're here, we're a big part of your community, Sacred Heart, we touch on X amount of districts here, and we just want to know that we're here to help you, you're here to help us, and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So is a dinner there? No, so I think that's actually why this stuff actually exists. No, I think exactly. So that's, they're just probably... Yeah. If not, I think that we'd have to really realize right. this is actually why I came up with corporate America all the time. But if they gave you like parting gifts of five hundred dollar bottles of wine, well, yeah. yeah. Or if they have the you know. dinner, I thought, God, is that thing? And again, I'm not one of those districts, but would that follow? But it but it might. It depends on yeah. what they're doing with it. That's so exactly the point of it. Yeah. No, but it's confusing, but it's also because you yeah. know, life is confusing, yeah. but the whole point is to and when we can make more black wine, but you can't do that. But we're kind of yeah, like, you know, you, right. you guys are comfortable that this isn't going to, like, ensnare somebody who's doing something innocent. Just to, you know, oh, um, yeah. That's where I'm comfortable. I actually think that our, our charter gives a lot more leeway than other charters. Candidly, I didn't like it as much because I was like, there's so many exceptions. Yeah, yeah She started that way. But I think it's actually, you know, if you're concerned about that, I think this is better than like the Milford or Granite. I think they're better than Granite. Better than the little yeah. I can recognize uh, that we live in a town that people are going to know each other and socialize yeah, irrespective of, the, of their politics. Who, who would, like if there are questions like the one I just brought up, who would determine if that is a violation or not? Is there is it the town attorney or is that the, the ethics mm -hmm. commission? Mm -hmm. Like this would have to go in front of the commission? Well, there's a complaint, right? Well, no, no, well, well if you have a question, a lot of people have guided. They're not. They're gonna. They're gonna find out first before they do it. They're not gonna right. get it. Yeah, I hope that's not. Well, right. I don't know. Just, there are people that ask for forgiveness and they're people ask for permission. I think on the permission. I think the ethics. I think that the ethics commission would be. I don't think it specifically spells it out there, but I think that would be the logical place for people there to go. There is a provision now for advisory opinions, yeah. and they, they have to answer within 45 days, which would be way past the day. Yeah. What if someone has something this weekend they're invited to? Yeah. Ask Karen. There's got to be a mechanism to it's within 45 days or advise as to when the opinion shall be rendered. Right, that's true. So so but I think those things are like, if days. there's an issue with like, Contracts and making money out of stuff. Go ahead. I think that it's. There's these other rules for for employees, right, who have a question about this. So I would assume it's not turn. Probably HR, and in fact, the town clerk asked if we could change um, the, the financial statement thing to, to go with the HR documents when there's a new hire, so that she doesn't have to collect. All. So what the requirement is to send um, a copy of this to every new employee. Um, but I mean, I would think HR would be the one that would yeah. monitor it. For yeah. Uh, but I would say that should be a resource center for any you know any town official who has a question because yeah, you can't you, know, I mean, you can't you can't wait that's, that's for the yeah. to meet you, right? You're gonna have to do something in yeah. three days. What are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. You, need to meet, you need to be able to get a fairly quick same, response. Uh, same ethics code. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and there should probably be a workshop like at the beginning of the term or yeah, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This has, I mean, members and volunteers and everyone on the commission, they, they have to know this stuff. This isn't like just put out there, like, hey, you signed this thing, did you know? Right. What well, I did? I got a bunch of stuff on it. Right. There is a requirement that at the beginning of each, um, I think every November or something, or every January, the moderator, the head of every commission and board has to 
tell, remind everyone about these things. They don't necessarily do a, a course, though. You know, well, I think like the Robert's show. Rules course, but it yeah. would be like something no, like that. Would be, you didn't tell that. Yeah. Because but, you do a FOIA, you know, I think you'd have to add yeah, ethics. Yeah, and I think you do touch on ethics, but like really opening it up a little more. This is more complex and it's, thing, it's stuff that people need to be aware of. And it will take more than a five minute overview. And I think it's. Having it be, we don't want it to be complex, but having no. it be significant, we're hoping also is just a way to say, hey, this is important in our town. Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah, feel like a speed bump or stop sign. Yeah. yeah. Just like, yeah. Oh, okay. is, anybody, is there a formal like, acknowledgement process built yeah. in here? There yeah. Okay. That's what Be Betsy was going to be getting those, and she said, can you please have HR collect, which we haven't talked to them about that yet, but I think that, that makes sense, really. Okay. Yeah, so that would be one thing I would. And what we were saying is like the go to person on, and if it is HR, if it's whoever it is. Yeah, this Karen, I don't, I don't even know what head of HR is, but like, I'm, I'm going to guess that for town employees, they have some like automated things that they have to do every year anyway, where they're like, look at sexual harassment things online. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, Bill, I don't know if they do that. Yeah, but really like a lot of companies do that. And then you just, you, you click on and mm -hmm. sort of read it so you're not doing it in person each year. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. annually that whoever's mm -hmm. sitting in a seat, Mm -hmm. Gets an email and does it. Um, Mr. Chairman, sure with, with your permission, can I ask the first selection? Of course. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. this is first selection. What do you think it makes sense for HR to monitor the ethics um, uh, code things to kind of uh, uh, be able to edit? Yes, the question, the specific question was if something comes up and someone's like, I don't know if this is ethical under the code or not. Would HR be a good place to go because they're probably monitoring it for their employees or the I, I think it should be the ethics commission. Why, why wouldn't it be the ethics Because the advice, an advisory opinion takes a long time, so if it's a sh something they need to know sooner, it's from, from an interpretive, not for permission. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The interpretive side. I think you have to ask. Yeah. Sure. I mean, you have to ask. Have yeah. Because yeah. I, yeah. you know, we've been talking a lot about this, and I don't think well, HR would buy, would um, investigate employee yeah. ethics issues as long as I mean, the ethics commission should know about them. Um, to ensure that they're being properly investigated. But you're talking about for everyone, including commissions? Well, um, yeah, so actually, that, but that makes me wonder because this would provide the ethics commission would it also investigate any employees, which is probably okay. I think both no, the ethics commission should have information about, we, we think, at least I think, that they should have information about employees and uh, elected officials and appointees. But for employees, the, some of the initial groundwork might be done by the um, HRA. Okay. Yeah, I think it's right. The interpretive type questions that someone has, you know, if, if something comes up in a short, you know, shorter time span, like 45 days, or if you just have a question, geez, I just got this, you know, <laughs> gift or whatever it is, and why did you say this? Okay. But then we make the moderator answer. Actually, yeah. that's what the, that's moderator. the moderator answer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But you can prefer if it's really hard, yeah. then you've got to go to the ethics commission. If it's like reading, like it should be, yeah. you should be able to. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, let's take the dinner as an example. But I mean, take it off. Oh, we can ask the chair of the ethics commission. Right, to be respond like, to those, yeah. and then to be available to respond. Yeah. Or, yeah. Listen, if they're not going to get any questions. Maybe there'll be a few here and there. Yeah. But to have someone as a go-to in the short term when things come up, mm -hmm. versus waiting 45 days and filing and having to wait for the commission. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the Share, share of that. Yeah. Like a single, a single prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. Interpretive yeah. value. Okay. It's not the moderator, right? It's someone, but they themselves don't be geared up on no, what, what is not allowed. I think it's that woman who went to the Yale Street Middle School. She did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's an important extra responsibility. Okay. You, may I ask a quick question? Uh, did you guys look at Article um, 11, Standards of Conduct in the Charter? Yeah, I believe it, yeah. Okay, I don't, I didn't know if you talked about it, but there's, you know, there's verbiage in there for elected officials too. Yeah. Oh, it does say that in the charter? Uh, 11 one, elected and appointed town officers are team members, members of boards and commissions of authority, and all employees. Um, 11 
hear that. I know I, I didn't know that I forgot that it said that we're moving to office because Bill Pierce said that isn't allowed under Connecticut law. It might have been a case. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to impeachment process. <laughs> yeah. So, 11.2 is just. Yeah, no elected or appointed town officer. Shell, right. But the consequence of being removed from office, um, well, we'll have to take I mean, it. We can't change this and we change the charter if we ever change it. No, but I guess if you, if, you, if you violate the ethics rules and you violate it, you de facto violated the standard of conduct. So right. Would, so whatever removal mechanism is in there would apply. Right. Something. Right. Yeah, I'm just thinking if it does say elected officials can be removed, then I as long as there's a mechanism. I mean, my thing is as long as there's a mechanism, mm -hmm. it sounds like there is. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Um, are we going to have? I have some grammatical things. If you wanted to send me, uh, I don't, I don't know if we want to go through every single one of them, but we could. Um, and then I have some questions on a couple of the provisions that I would appreciate some clarity on. What would you like me to do? The grammatical ones, we actually got, there's a woman who um, Phil Piers introduced us to just a few days ago who is, whose whole career was about ethics and GE. And I think she's teaching ethics now at Sacred Heart. And she just sent us, um, Carrie and me, a couple of comments last night that were just mostly grammatical. So maybe you maybe you can send those to me and we could put hers in and then when we meet we could all consider those changes perhaps yeah. at the next you guys why you since you why you ask the question yeah. and then yeah. why you guys read it now that you've heard some of the answers yeah. and we come back again yeah. with anything yeah. else now you have yeah. yeah. more clarity as to why we did this. So what is our pro what is the process well, you're expecting? Uh, definitely want to get your question, but like what is the process that you're anticipating? Are you are you asking us? What are you asking of LNA tonight? Um, I guess tonight um, to just to hear about it and listen to it, and I was hoping we could maybe do a meeting, uh, a special day, meeting to yeah, follow up. Okay. To, to fine tune it okay. um, with your comments and uh, this woman's changes to let you look at that and whatever Michelle okay. has. Thank you. Go ahead. Michelle. Oh, thank you. Um, my general comment for some of the grammatic is to change the language to the non-gender. That was her comment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then also in the beginning, treat all people, not citizens, yeah. and Fairfield's residents, not citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm sure there's just some small things with numbers and stuff. Uh, it was 21-6 that I found um, confusing, um, starting with letter B. No former public official or public employee shall represent anyone other than the town concerning any matter in which they participated personally and substantially while in municipal service other than the drafting of an ordinance and the town had a substantial interest. I, I read that a few times. Too. I don't, yeah. did you end up knowing I what I, it I, meant? I finally understood it. What does it mean, please? <laughs> Or to have an example, an example would be helpful. I didn't, I, I had no idea what that meant. I think, I think, if it's only represent the town. So, like the town attorney, yeah. mm -hmm. he represents the town. So he starts working on a legal case regarding negligence at one of the bridge construction sites. Mm -hmm. He cannot then leave the employee of the town and then represent the other side of the party. He can, he can only, he can, he, he can he can never take the opposite side. So a person can only be involved from the town perspective, even like post town employment. Do you, do, do you follow me? Post town. Yeah. Well, the municipal service. Well, this. Just, no, that's no, that's no, 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 what? Are you are you concerned with the language or the or the underlying yeah point? kind of both mm. yeah uh, I, I like yeah. no former public official or public like it's even more the public official part like we don't always agree with the town yeah yeah and we don't necessarily like we are in service of the town but we are not like the attorney or like a public works employee. 
um, who shouldn't be, for example, out, I don't know if, well, this is like a former, this is even after service. I don't understand what this is saying. Like, I wouldn't know how to. It's, it's really limited. I mean, you're right. If you're, how would this apply to us? Like, we're a public official. Would this apply to us in some way? And how would it, if we are a former public official, shall represent anyone other than the yeah, town you know, concerning you any you matter? You represent the town, okay? You represent yeah. your you represent your um, constituents. You you don't represent the town. No, but that, that, so, car, no, but, that, but currently she's okay. participating personally, substantially in matters, right? The the representing is after your yeah. public official. Right. So if you're representing someone who had a substantial bid for Right. The so, me. Like that. Right, so, I'm a lawyer. so this, this I think came from the Connecticut, this is straight from the Connecticut stuff. Um, so I'm a lawyer. I'm on the RTM for two years and everybody loves me. Ha ha ha. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, do something realistic. And then, <laughs> play with me. Okay. Um, and then six months after I'm not reelected, I, I come in with, I don't know, something. I want to be the one that I'm representing the guys that are going to build the bridge. You know, right. There are two bits to build some sure. huge bridge, and I'm representing one of them, I actually can't come and talk to all my friends on the RTM and try to get this approved. I mean, that's not part of the RTM. It's probably the whatever. It's like I don't know. Many things it's like a revolving door. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah. You can't use your status as a public official or a public employee after the fact to garner favors to people that you've been serving with. But what is the example that would be not an attorney? Like, yeah. is, is there, what about for sure. RTM? Lobby. So these, there's actually the contract. Let's say, I don't know. Assaulting, lobbying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assaulting. Okay. And a, a special advisor, an expert on something, mm -hmm. come in and you, you talk about some technology that you're part of. And, and you're not supposed to be trying to generate revenue, profit, yeah. 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 From the town, you can represent the town and defend the town, or, or represent right. the town. Right. But in the legal case, it's, you're, there's, there's a, uh, an opposition. But in, in other cases, it's not necessarily an opposition. You're, you're, no, but think about like a real estate, somebody in commercial real real estate, and you need to go to the city to get zoning for. Right, no, but the again, hotel. that's legal. But what? what no, the business person. Like, what about a realtor, a real estate agent who's on the RTM, and then goes and represents someone who's selling or buying? who are from the town. Is that not okay? If the realtor didn't, wasn't involved in that piece of property, I don't think they would. It has to be personally and substantially yeah. participating in something. So, Pers In which? Uh, in the thing that, while well, they were a public employee or a public official. It's any matter in which you participate. Oh, so the, it's the matter that you are participating in when you are a public official. Yeah, right. Yes, exactly. right. Oh, I so missed that part. Like, okay. We're, I see. So maybe, I don't know. Like somebody who was involved in in cleaning up the fill pile, like who really ran that or something, then leaves and becomes a contractor who. Yeah. Owns, I don't know. Oh, I get it. This is like what like insider doing? trading. What yeah. Really yeah. Really yeah. That's what it is. What it's like here? you were involved in a matter, yeah. and because yeah. you yeah. know yeah. about yeah. it, like you actually yeah. 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 And like you were like, oh, I'm yeah, not going to build their thing. I'm going to do it. Yeah. This is the year from the state. Yeah. 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 That's true, too. Yeah. yeah. But what about all the, the, the union contracts we vote on? We're like materially, substantially involved in those. If not personally, we were personally involved in them. We're substantially involved in those contracts. We're reading them. We're, we're talking about it. So then we. I mean, then we can't do anything having to do with any of the. I don't I, just, I don't know. And substantially, I think it's meant to be more. Be more than than you. Yeah. But um, maybe it should be limited to for one year after leaving or. Something like that. Well, I think, see, I think what this is, this provision is calling out is the specific instance, right? So it would be basically if I was involved, intimately involved with some issue of the mm -hmm. town, and, and it's an issue that could go on for a long period of time, mm -hmm. there is no time. I can't mm. get involved from another perspective. Mm, right. So that, 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 that to me is like the mm -hmm. intent here. You're right. I think, you're right. Right. I think some clarifying language, yeah. though, would be very helpful. Yeah, I agree. It's stuff on the term on it. I wouldn't make it for that. But it is that yeah, it's the matter. It's right. the matter that's yeah. why it's forever yeah. because right. it's the particular matter. Like it's some mm -hmm. sort of something that you have some kind of specialized 
inside from five years knowledge. Ago, I can deal with it. Well, like if it's the, well, maybe it because matter. it's the same matter. Yeah. Like, let's pretend it's something that because you were involved in it, you know something that would be somehow helpful to get an edge because you worked on it mm -hmm. as an elected official in your capacity, and now you're a private citizen. And if you wanted to, you could take that information in the private sector and use it to your advantage or someone you know's advantage outside of the context of the matter when you were an elected official. Yeah. So if that matter goes on for a long time and you could time still time. benefit from it, I think that's maybe why. But even if you did that, you're not a town employee anymore or an elected official. So what authority or jurisdiction does the Ethics Commission have over you? It sounds to me, but again, I let's start with the fact that I was confused reading this. So this is me trying to figure yeah. it out. So I think what it's saying is, again, you get you have some kind of knowledge that you are allowed access to as an elected official that you can't and shouldn't apply to a circumstance after you are no longer an elected official. In other words, you're not even, you're looking at the matter as an elected official for the, because you're an elected official and you might be looking at it to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And then you're no longer an official. You learn something from X, Y, and Z and now you, you could do A, B, and C mm -hmm. that's gonna benefit you or someone else because you were in a room doing something that- No, no, no I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I that's a gifting thing, thing to do. But I just you don't think- it's legal? There's no, well, there's there's no, no that point, there's no, it, it's almost, you're no longer an elected official. Right, so no there's, there's no recourse. There's no recourse. But you're saying you would never do it, I guess. It's, yeah, a, like, it's okay. a moral. It's a moral. Well, it's a moral. Well, it's a moral. 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 It's a and you leave, right. and these are the senators and the representatives that start buying up stock or mm -hmm. selling stock because they hear, because they're a senator, that something bad's going to happen that the rest of us don't know from the outside. Straight out of the Connecticut. I think it's more, no. kind of think it's more that while it's you're still an elected official, you'll take an action to right benefit there. a possible future employer because you're getting intrigued from them. You know, well, there's that too. That, that's the context you see in the federal cases a lot of the time. You know, you're regulating my pharmaceutical. Come work for us afterwards. Mm -hmm. Play footsie. Mm -hmm. Give you, you know, give us a good, uh, a good result. And or they hire you after the fact simply because you have influence with well, that, the RTF because okay. you have you have a position there that they, people know you and they know that you know they can get an advantage, uh, bid wise or whatever. I think a lot of those things would be excluded from this because it's so particular to the matter, mm, having right. participated personally and substantially. Right. Um, so I think that would, you know, maybe the time limit isn't necessary. Actually, to, 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 to me, this is almost like. This is almost like the town saying, hey, you work for me. Now you can't leave and then take oh. the other side and whatever yeah. matter. So, it comes straight from Connecticut from 2009 when they established the municipal ethics. And it's, this bill establishes the model of municipal ethics to, to contain provisions relating to revolving doors. It's totally mm. intended to do that. Yeah. You're not in, yeah. you curry favor, you go out, you make money. Is, is there any... Can we find out information about how it's been enforced? If it has been enforced, Good. anybody under yeah. fire for this? An example for us in the RTM. That's how we're going to kill it. We're applying a federal and state lobbying law to us. Uh, so. Well, I mean, even like I think someone in the administration or an employee is more likely to have a situation like this. What about yeah. someone on senior tax relief ordinance who then goes and helps a senior apply for tax relief? Mm. No, that's 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 that you're just administratively helping somebody to satisfy the guidelines, which are specified. Mm -hmm. and, and okay, let me add that you testify in court when they sue the town because they didn't get it. Mm. As long as as long as you're testifying honestly based yeah. on the, the okay. you know the criteria, it's not a violation. I, mean, I would think what you participated in was just working on the on the ordinance, yeah. right, which we are specifically excluding from this. Okay. Rather than like something about, about that person. So it's, I think this is meant to be trying to be really specific about the, the matter. I think also this wouldn't really affect me. Yeah, yeah it sounds like it's not really legislated. It's more like, you know. It's not that influential. It's like a 50-year-old senior tax relief lobbyist. Yeah, it's not like it's not really legislated. It's more like, you know. 
Yeah. You know, so in falsify their birth certificate. <laughs> so they're 48, but it says 50. It's, it's, <laughs> we're trying to argue. Yeah, I, I don't think. I don't think this. It, this could affect people, but there's no enforcement mechanism because the town. Once you're a former employee, the town can't fire you. No. You have. You know. Mm. You haven't committed any crime. You can't do anything. Mm. So it's it's almost like a toothless provision, but it's there nonetheless. That rain? What is that? Yeah, what is that? Well, if we're, we're going to have this ordinance. Yeah. Doesn't it have the force of law for any citizen? You're going to have to you say you're going to have to be arrested. You're going 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 to be arrested. You're
Mm-hmm. It's a very legalistic document, and I, I don't consider myself to be a, a legalese mm-hmm. guy, so I would be reluctant to sponsor something like this because, you know, I'll be candid, there will probably be language in here that I may not fully understand, but I'll go, okay, that seems to make sense. It's also so easy to have a message in the intent of it. Right. But anyways, we can talk about that. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me say that. What do you think? Oh, I, 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 I think. Yeah, yeah, you have to be good. You have to go to the next week. And I understand. Yeah. So okay. try. So we're going to try to release this to the full body for the uh, at our next special meeting, which hopefully no, I, I think we no, I think we no. Would, we would get our comments in to the drafting team by next Monday. Okay, and then on our meeting on the 19th, we can all sit down with the final, more polished draft, and and hopefully you're talking April 19th. April 19th. Yeah. April 19th yeah. But I was I was advocating that we have to have a special meeting anyway to talk about the the senior tax relief thing. So maybe we could try to yeah, before that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have no objection to that. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. So we have a lot of various budget hearing meetings, so maybe we could just tag onto one of those or something. And oh yeah. Knowing the comments, I mean, if we could still do it online, probably. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right, so how much time do we, in an ideal world, when do we want to do this in a week or? Give us the comments, and then we can figure out the okay. next steps. Because yeah. Yeah. I already saw some cleanup comments, but they're more substantive things. We're going to have to adjust that. Yeah. Michelle, did you have something else you wanted to talk about more broadly? No, okay. I think that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Like, we'll start with that one. So unless we have a special meeting. You can't read something like that. Well, it's not going to read. We have some time to spend that. Yeah, right, yeah. And we don't know what the tax relief deadline is, so maybe we can find out if that's more urgent. We may need to meet sooner, but I don't mm-hmm. know if we're all past. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you're right. If I, even if we, I guess any time we do it before um, the agenda has to be yeah. done, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Any other comments or anything? Okay, let's adjourn. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, yeah. Thank you, both of you. Good.